Hello, and welcome back to Chapter 4, Managing Money. Let's talk about income taxes. Fall is a great time to talk about this. It might give you more confidence, more understanding of what's going on with your taxes in the spring. Here we go. Okay, so we're going to start with an income tax preparation flowchart. I have a cough coming on. <coughs> Pardon me. And right now, this is all going to be a huh? Um, but don't worry. This video is going to straighten all that out for you. So we start with the gross income. Gross is like, it's just all the money you made. Now, we'll subtract some in adjustments to the income. So the gross income, after we subtract adjustments, it's called the adjusted gross income. I know, pretty clever, right? We take our adjusted gross income and we look at deductions and exemptions. Okay, after we take care of deductions and exemptions from our adjusted gross income, this is the taxable income. So all of the money that we make, we adjust that a little bit and we take care of deduction, deductions and exemptions and what remains, that's what we get taxed on. Excuse me, that's what we get taxed on. So we'll look in our can, uh, rate tables and the tables change potentially every year. Um, I believe it's mid-February before the IRS has their updated tax information for you to actually file so that you can get money back. Um, but they're always changing. So the tables or rates, you got to look at based on the specific year. And then we, t we subtract tax credits. Um, there's the child tax credit. Uh, there's other tax credits. I believe there's student tax credits. And so your taxable income and the tax that you owe, right, from the tables, minus any tax credits, like kids or work or health tax credits, that's our total tax. Now we're sitting here, we owe the government whatever money for tax. Now we subtract the payments or the withholdings, right? That's the money that's taken out of your paycheck before you even see it, right? Goes to the government. So cool, we've paid part of this. And then if your total tax you haven't made all your payments, well, then you owe more. If you've made extra in payments, then you get a refund. Refunds are not the goal. A refund means the government got to borrow your money for free. They didn't pay you interest. They're never going to pay you interest. Your goal is not to get a refund. Your goal is to not owe any. You want to make all your payments and withholdings throughout the year take care of your total tax so that you don't owe any and you don't get a refund at the end of the tax year. I know all that money is nice to have, um, but that's just the government giving your money back to you with no interest. That's not awesome. Here we go. Uh, income on tax forms. Let's look at an example. Karina earned wages of $48,600, received $750 in interest from a savings account, and contributed $1,200 to a tax-deferred retirement plan. She was entitled to deductions totaling $14,250. Find her gross income, adjusted gross income, and taxable income. Okay, so now we're putting this flowchart into process here. Karina's gross income is the sum of all her income. Gross income is the sum of all income. That means all the wages and all the interest. So this is the bank account interest, uh, savings account interest. So we add those together. That's all the money she made. Her $1,200 contribution to, uh, so this is gross income. Uh, her $1,200 contribution to a tax deferred retirement plan counts as an adjustment to her gross income. So her adjusted gross income, AGI, is the gross income minus the adjustments. So um, I have a tax deferred health plan, I have a tax deferred retirement plan. So they take all of that money out of my paycheck, out of my taxes, bef because no taxes are paid on that yet. I'll have to pay on those when I use it. Okay, so when we make that, su that subtraction, all right, so now this is my AGI of 48,150. We have a gross income, we have the adjustments, and so we have the adjusted gross income. To find our taxable income now, right, we take gross, 
minus adjustments to get adjusted gross income. And then we use that answer. Our taxable income is our adjusted gross income minus our deduction. She took a standard deduction. She did not itemize, all right, the standard deduction. And so $33,900 is the only amount that the government's going to tax her on. Not the 48,000 income, not the 750 of the interest from the savings account, but after adjustments and deductions and things have been made, this is all that she's actually getting taxed on. Now, all right, so that's the first step. So those are just a couple of subtractions to get you from one to the next. Gross to adjusted gross to taxable. Now, in order to calculate your tax, it depends on your filing status. All right, four categories. First of all, single. If you are unmarried, divorced, or legally separated. Married filing jointly. I'm going to go with the obvious that you're married, legally married, according to the principality for which you're filing the taxes. Uh, and you and your spouse file. So you, you do it on the same tax return. There's one tax return for both of you because you're married and that's what you do. <coughs> but there's also married filing separately. Married and you and your spouse file two separate tax returns. This is uh, used frequently with small businesses, right? Maybe you have a business or your spouse has a business or you each have a business. And so you file separately because things are wonky and you don't want one affecting the other person, even though you're married, even though it's all still all good, right? Sometimes there's a reason to file separately. Um, it has nothing to do with whether you're happily married. And then there's also head of household. You're not married, but you're paying more than half the cost of supporting a dependent child or parent. All right? So if, if you're single and you're taking care of your parent, you, you can actually file as head of household. I would talk to a tax specialist to be sure. Um, I'm so fortunate that my mom is my tax specialist. So um, I talk to her frequently, but I'm not taking care of her. So I don't have to worry about filing head of household. I knew that. All right, now I mentioned earlier that uh, Karina, I believe, took the standard deduction of 14,600, I believe. Um, there's the difference, there's standard and there's itemized. Nearly everyone is entitled to deductions of some sort that lower your taxable incomes by the amounts you spend on deductible expenses. Um, you can make donations, the interest you pay towards your house, your mortgage, state taxes that you paid last year, and you have two options for determining your total deduction. You could take itemized deductions where you list all of your deductible expenses and add them up to find your total deduction. Uh, something encouraged is if you're going to do charitable donations, don't spread them out amongst multiple years. Do all of your large donations in one year hopefully a year in which you paid a lot of state taxes uh, the previous year so that it's more deductions and it'll help you out. Um, if you like donate 500 each year, it might not be helpful, but if you donate a thousand one year and zero the next, itemized versus standard might make a difference for you. Dollar values were just examples. The standard deduction, you could skip itemizing. You don't have to keep your receipts for all your doctor's visits and your this and your that and your whatever else. Uh, you can skip itemizing your deductions and instead simply deduct an amount known as your standard deduction, which depends only on your status. Um, and you can look in various tables to show the standard deductions. Uh, we'll take a look soon. Note that you get either the standard or the itemized. You should choose the one that's larger because we're subtracting it, right? So. Look at what the standard deduction is, and then look at what you would have if you itemized. You want to choose the bigger value because you're subtracting that from your taxable income, or excuse me, your adjusted gross income. You're making your taxable income lower. Take the larger uh, deduction. Most people, that'll be the standard deduction every year. Suppose you have the following deductible expenditures. 4,500 for interest on a home mortgage. $900 for contributions to charity, and $250 for state income taxes. Your filing status entitles you to a standard deduction of $12,550 should you itemize your deductions. Okay, 
So you have your receipts, right? Your bank sent your statement. You have your receipts for charity. You know exactly what you paid last year for state income taxes. If we add these together, we see that we're at 5,650. If you had $40,000 and you subtracted 5,650 versus if you had $40,000 and you subtracted 12,550, which answer would you rather pay taxes on? Um, zero, five, that's gotta be a three, not a four. Uh-huh. And here, a thousand minus 550, that's five, that's a four, seven. Would you rather pay taxes on 27,000? Or would you rather pay taxes on $34,000? Eh, the difference about $7,000. I'd rather pay taxes on a smaller amount because the taxes will be smaller. All right, so that's why I'm saying always take the larger standard deduction, bigger number. That's the one we want to subtract. That way it makes our taxable as small as possible. Now, a progressive income tax means that people with higher taxable income pay at a higher tax rate. Marginal tax rates are assigned to different income uh, ranges. So you might see like 5,000 to 9,999. And then you'll see 10,000 to 14,999. And then you'll see 15,000. So if you make anywhere between 5,000 and less than 10,000, then you'll pay this percent. If you make between these two, then you'll pay this percent of that money. So you'll find these tax rates and here we go. That's exactly what I was drawing up. Uh, in 2017, you can see what the standard deduction, notice married filing jointly, double this value. If you're single and then you get married, there's two of you, it's the exact same value. All right, so you're not, it's still 12,550 for each of you in 2017. That number's higher now. Married filing separately, it's still the same number. Household, they realize that you got some stuff going on. So, uh, yeah, there's a star on this because it's not straight up tax rate. 10% if you make up to 9,950 as a single person. 12% if you make up to 40,525. You know, which tax bracket are you in? I'm going to guess most of us are in the one of the first three tax brackets. Um, this this is where college graduates go. And this is where family money is because that's just crazy. Okay, personal personal opinion there. Personal, personal opinion. All right. Now, the distinction between refundable and non-refundable tax credits is important in cases where the value of your tax credits exceeds your calculated tax bill, all right, based on your taxable income. What if you've paid in more than you owe? Well, not all of your tax credits are refundable. If the tax credits you were qualified for are refundable, then you get your refund check, you go shopping, yay! Government's giving you back your own money without interest. But if the tax credits are non-refundable, you don't get any benefit from the excess tax credit. It's just like, oh, okay, that's nice for someone else. <laughs> <clears throat> As a rule, tax credits are more valuable than deductions. The things you pay towards it are better than things you get to take away. A tax credit reduces your total tax bill by the full amount of the credit. All right, so you get, you get to take that credit away completely. Whereas a deduction, uh, it reduces your income by the amount of the deduction. All right, it might not be a full amount, it might be a percentage. So let's look at tax credits versus tax deductions. Suppose you're in the 22% tax bracket. How much does a $1,000 tax credit save you? How much does a $1,000 charitable contribution, which is tax deductible, save you? Answer these questions both for the case in which you itemize and for which you stake the standard deduction. Here we go. Now, the entire $1,000 tax credit is, de uh, is a deducted, is a deduction from your bill and therefore saves you a full $1,000 whether you itemize or take the standard deduction, it saves you $1,000. Now, 
a $1,000 deduction reduces my taxable income, but not my total tax bill, right? It, it affects the amount that I pay the interest on. So I'm going to pay an interest of this. It's going to affect an interest value or a, a percentage value. Wow, percentage value is what I meant to say. For a 22% tax bracket, at best, your $1,000 deduction will save you $220, 22% of the $1,000. However, you'll only have this $220 if you itemize your deductions. If you don't itemize, this charity doesn't help you at all, and your contribution will save you nothing. Uh, you'll still use standard deductions. All right? So it depends. That tax credit sometimes better than a tax deduction. All right. So Peyton, and I guess we're going to spell Peyton in several different ways here. Uh, Peyton is in the 12% marginal tax bracket and takes a standard deduction. Marion is in the 37% marginal tax bracket and itemizes. They each donate $1,000 to charity. Compare their true cost for the charitable contributions. Okay. They both donate $1,000 to charity. Is this the same $1,000? Really is the question. Like, is it, is it uh, the same amount of giving for both of them? Remember that tax deductions give you a tax benefit only if you itemize your deductions. Peyton takes the standard deductions, and therefore, she pays the full cost of the $1,000 contribution. When Peyton donates, this all is coming from her money, because she takes the standard deduction. For Marion, who's in the 37% tax bracket, the $1,000 contribution, 37%, saves $370 in taxes. So the true cost of her contribution, that $1,000 that she gave them, she gives a, a she gets a three hundred and seventy dollars savings in taxes, so she earns she gets she mm, say it right. She only really gives six hundred and thirty dollars. The true cost of the donation is considerably lower for Marion because she's in a higher tax bracket. In effect, the tax code subsidizes thirty seven percent of Marion's contribution to charity, but provides no subsidy for Peyton's contribution because she's using the standard. This again illustrates the general pr uh, principle of tax deductions. They have greater value to taxpayers who itemize are in a higher tax bracket. And this is why you find that um, in TVs and movies, uh, if you don't know of any people in your personal life, you could see this reflected in our entertainment. Uh, rich people give more to charity. They donate more because it has a greater value to them. Uh, someone like myself, I apologize, my Stella's going off. Those darn dogs interrupt my flow. Okay, so a general principle of tax deductions. They have a greater value to taxpayers who itemize are in a higher tax bracket. TV, uh, entertainment, right? Uh, the wealthier people donate to charities because it saves them money. They're not actually donating $1,000. When uh, a middle class person donates $1,000 to charity, they're giving $1,000. When a rich person donates to charity, they're trying to save themselves some money. But the money still goes to charity, so is it a horrible thing? I don't know. All right. Social Security and Medicare taxes. Some income is subject to Social Security and Medicare taxes, which are collected under the name of FICA, uh, Federal Insurance Contribution Act taxes. FICA applies to... Income from wages, including tips, which is lame, um, self-employment. FICA does not apply to uh, savings account interest. Income from dividends, so if you can invest. Profits from sales of stock. So let's look at uh, some FICA taxes. All right, so FICA. When you work to earn it, you get it. If you happen to have money and you get more money from that, FICA doesn't apply. In 2021, June er, Jude earned 26,000. Hey Jude, I don't sing. June er, Jude earned 26,000 in wages and tips from her job waiting tables. Calculate her FICA taxes and her total tax bill, including marginal taxes. What is her overall tax rate on her gross income, including both FICA and income taxes? Assume she is single and takes the standard deduction. That's a whole lot of, wow, this is why we hire the tax professionals, right? Step at a time. 
In 2021, that tells me which tax uh, tables to look at. 26,000 in wages and tips. I know that 26,000 was her gross income. And her FICA tax is at 7.65% because that's what FICA is set at in 2021. It is a 19, a fine year, fine year, 1989. Um, so the amount that Jude owes in FICA tax is $1,989. Now, what's Jude's income tax? Well, the gross, there have been no adjustments whatsoever. So the gross is equal to the adjusted gross income. Adjusted gross income minus the standard deduction is the taxable income. Jude is only going to pay, even though she made $26,000, she's only paying taxes on $13,450. From the tables... Jude's rates are 10% on the first 9,950 of her taxable income and 12% on the remaining amount. Okay. So, um, uh, sorry, up to 9,950 and then it was 12%. What was it? Up to 40,000, I don't know, 650 or something like that. Up to. So we're only charging 10%. Mm. This is her taxable. In the 10% range, right? 10% at 9,000 of the $9,950, but the over, right? The amount that was left over is being taxed at 12%. That's what that up to means. All right, so 10% of 99, the first 9,950, and then 12% of the amount over is 1415. So our total FICA tax plus her income tax is 3,404. Her overall tax rate, including both FICA and income tax, the total amount of tax she paid divided by the gross income is 0.131. Notice that Jude's overall tax rate is about 13.1%. Uh, Jude pays more in FICA taxes than in income taxes uh, because Jude doesn't make a lot of money. Let's talk about dividends and capital gains. Income with special tax treatment. Dividends on stocks. We talked about those earlier. Capital gains is profit from the sale of stock or other properties. And I don't mean livestock. Um, although, maybe you invest in that as well. Uh, Short-term capital gains are profits on items sold within 12 months of their purchase. Suppose you buy it in March uh, this year and you sell it in October, well, that would be a short-term capital gain. Any profit you've made in this amount of time is a short-term capital gain. Long-term capital gains are profits on items held for more than 12 months before being sold. Um, or other properties, you can have capital gains tax on Selling a house, I believe. Don't quote me on that, though. Long term is more than 12 months. That's it. It's more than. Long term, less than a year. Short term. Tax deferred income. Tax deferred savings plans allow you to defer income taxes on contributions to certain types of savings plans. These include individual retirement accounts, IRAs, qualified retirement plans, a new category, and 401k plans. So, uh, suppose every month I make $3,000. And in this $3,000, I set aside $500 for my IRA. These are not actual amounts. I don't even know if these are legit amounts that qualify. I'm just saying, here's an example with some random numbers. So I make $3,000 a, a month. I, set, I send $500 to my IRA. I only take home uh, take home taxable. And now I'm looking at actually only $2,500 a month that is taxable that I take home because this will get taxed when I remove it. When I take it out, It has a big fat tax on it. 
All right, so we don't pay income taxes right now, but when we start collecting our IRA, our retirement, as our new replaced, right, it replaces our, our income from working, that's when we're going to get taxed on it. Blows. You got to pay taxes eventually. Let's look at a tax deferred plan. Suppose you're single, have a taxable income of $65,000 and make monthly payments of $500 to a tax deferred savings plan. How do the tax deferred contributions affect your monthly take home pay? Okay, so according to the earlier table, at 65,000, our tax rate is 22%. Each $500 contribution will reduce your tax bill by 22%, so by $110. While $500 does go into your tax deferred savings account, your paychecks only go by go down by $390. Crazy, right? So it's kind of cool. But you're still going to pay that tax later. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Good luck on the homework. Let me know if you have questions.